All right, well, welcome to uh, West Orlando WordPress. Um, we've got some swag there that's, that's part of our, our treat for being part of the WordPress Pro Network now. So we're an official WordCamp WordPress meetup, which is awesome. Um, they're paying for this space as well. So, you know, uh, just send an email to support at WordCamp and say thanks for the space. <laughs> so my name is Rob Watson. I'm the CEO of webedextras.com small agency working here in, uh, in Winter Garden, serving mostly or the Orlando area, but pretty much everywhere else too. Whoever will hire me, I'll take them, <laughs> pretty much. So if you know anybody who needs a website, anyway. Um, so today's topic is uh, getting WordPress content into Google answer boxes and adding schema. So the way that I'm trying to structure our, our, our meetups is that we have you know, a little bit of everything for everybody, just some, some basic stuff that you can do within, you know, without any coding knowledge and, then, and a little bonus part for, for coders who wanna do some code stuff. Um, I myself, I'm not like a super coder, so like I have to look a lot of stuff up and I have to, I don't remember, I have a goldfish memory when it comes to syntax and, and where to put stuff, so I'm always Googling stuff, but I, from, from what I hear, all the, all the coders are like that, so. Um, but I, I started out, you know, back when I was 13 years old, messing around with computers and teaching myself basic and assembler and that kind of stuff. So I've got a long history, just not of doing anything, one thing. <laughs> so, um, so what we're going to cover today is what is the Google answer box? We'll also talk about how does Google select the site's content for, for a feature? And then we'll go into how do you write for the ability to get selected into the Google answer box? And then we'll finish up with some schema, what it is and how to use it and how it benefits you on the Google answer box thing. What is the Google answer box? The Google answer box is what you see here. So I just typed in a query, how much wood, 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 chuck, chuck, wood, chuck, could chuck, wood, and poof, you know, we've got an actual answer from an authoritative website, apparently. <laughs> Somebody knows a lot about wood chucks. And so they gave this long, you know, calculated mathematical answer of how much wood a wood could chuck, right? So, <laughs> right? It's like, how much time do you have on your hands? So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's what a feature snippet is. There's a couple other, we'll get into a couple other uh, incarnations or manifestations of that. Um, so basically it just summarizes an answer right there in the search engine uh, uh, result page. Um, it's, it's always at the top, you know, uh, top to the side and then maybe a couple results down, there'll be another one. It's highly coveted, especially if you're trying to target voice search. Um, that's a big thing that's coming up now. A lot of people are talking into their phones as they drive or do other activities or asking questions, um, and Google is giving them which answer? Just the first one. And that's usually one of the answer box types of answers. So that's, that's the big takeaway from today is if you want to get into voice search, you got to try to target that. Yeah, Hope. I don't know if it uh, holds true today. Maybe uh, he can comment on this, but I know that a couple of years ago with Apple phones, uh, if you were looking up like a restaurant or something like that, mm -hmm. it would bring up their Yelp review first mm -hmm. versus their organic yeah. review. Yeah, yeah. And Google has been shifting this around a bit, and yeah. I, you know, I think they've moved away from Yelp because they have their own Google My Business uh, okay. type of so listing that they yeah, want to promote. They so that, away from that. Yeah, they've moved away from that. Um, so you'll usually see the Google My Business listing down the right hand side. That's another ver version of kind of a Google answer box in a way. Um, so, but done right, it can actually boost your click throughs. A lot of people, when this first came out in I think 2015, 2016, were really concerned that people were going to be searching and that Google was just going to display content and that they wouldn't click. And it's a kind of valid concern when you think about it. If you're searching for something, you find the answer, and then you're good to go. You don't need to click, right? It's almost like Google was stealing content from websites and using it to, to promote their own brand. But what ended up happening, as we'll see in just a minute, first I'm gonna, I'll get into that in just a sec. So um, here's the other, people also ask, is another manifestation of rich snippets. So this is another way that you can get to it. And this, this one is a little bit maddening for me because I'll, like, I'll click one of these and I'll open it and four more will show up. And it will just keep growing, and you're like, man, there's so much knowledge here. I could just sit here and read, you know, <laughs> which one do I choose? But yeah, this is another uh, good use of it. Um, so going back to the question of, you know, does, does this harm your click-throughs? It actually doesn't. Um, here's a test that uh, HubSpot ran. This, if you Google those, you'll find them. But HubSpot ran a test of just uh, uh, HubSpot results not being in the answer box versus them being in the answer box and they actually got a higher click-through rate with answer box displays. Do you know if those are localized geographically? So if I was going to say, uh, you know, who's got the, uh, not a good, you know, where, where do I 
I find some, something in Orlando? Yeah, or near me type query, yeah. queries. Yeah, those, uh, those typically show up in the, the, what they call the three pack or the snack pack, where it shows you a map and then it shows you three local businesses based on their reviews. So the highest reviewed one will be at the top and then the next one will be the next review and so on. It's separate from the it's, it's kind of the same concept, but it's a different system, um, semantically speaking. So, so I mean, yeah. Google My Business sort of does something. Yes, like that's, that's... My retail guys are using Google My Business. Yeah. So that's usually how Exactly. And Google My Business targets people who have an actual store, like a storefront. If you're a service area business, you don't show up as well as if you, as if you actually have a, a storefront. So if you're thinking of your business to actually have a storefront, that's going to help you which is really maddening because I'm never going to do that and I'm never going to be able to show like some of these other people do. Because um, I, I prefer to work from home. I, I prefer to have an agency environment where people who work for me, they can work from home, right? So it's kind of like a family values thing. I want to be with my family. I don't want to go to an office. And so this is kind of maddening for me. But you can stay at a physical address with a UPS store mm -hmm. and have it's not a PO box. You it could. It look like you are a brick and mortar if you want. Yeah. You but it doesn't help because people will Google you and then they'll go to that location. And then they'll get mad because they didn't find you there. They'll find a UPS like, ah, you know, so. Is the same kind of thing here at Scribble Space? A little bit. Uh, their, their marker was a little bit off when I first came here. They've fixed it since then, but yeah. It's, it's, I mean, they, they let home businesses like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, they have the, yeah, they have the mailbox thing where you can establish yourself here. And I guess that works for some types of businesses, but if, if somebody's actually looking for you, yeah. you know, they're gonna get really frustrated. So yeah, good. All right, so we'll move forward on that. Um, so how does Google select a site's content to feature? So number one, they kind of they look at SERP position. If you're on page one, top 10, you're more likely to get in there, right? So that's one factor. Another factor is a semantic relationship to the search query. Whatever the person has typed in, your site has to have related content, right? Related keywords. So keywords in the form of a question. How do I do this? What is that? You know, the, the, the types of questions, right? And if, if, you, if you match that question in your content, you're actually gonna show up better. So, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. So simplicity, brevity of an answer up front. So if you can answer that question in, I don't know, maybe 50 words or 100 words, you're more likely to show up. Presence of a meta description. So on, your all, on all your pages, using Yoast SEO or whatever plugin you prefer, all-in-one SEO, have that meta description in there. Yeah, hope. Wait, so when you say up front, do you mean like your very first paragraph? Yeah, so uh, the ones that I've done where I've been fishing around trying to get into the answer box, I'll, I'll have like a little section at the top, or either a box or just a list of steps. like. Homepage, first paragraph. Blog post that I've written on how to do something, at the very top, in the first paragraph, I'll just say, you know, step one, step two, step three. That's the quick rundown. Now let's get into the details. And that usually helps you kind of show up in the answer box because they're looking for the quick hit, you know, give me the few steps, and then they'll click if they want more details. Yep. Uh, so the structure of your answer counts, uh, your, whether you have steps, like in headings, like step one, step two, step three, lists, tables, table of contents, you know, anything that looks structured to Google that they can kind of grab and, and, and compute on. The quality and the helpfulness of the content is important. If it's not helpful content, it won't show up. Uh, quality and quantity of backlinks. The more backlinks you have to your site, the more authoritative, excuse me, the more authoritative your site is. And the, if, if you have a particular page that's like a cornerstone content page, that also counts a lot. I actually have one on my site that I accidentally wrote. I was just, <laughs> I was just doing a, a quick you know, uh, perusal of a client's site, looking to see why his site was, was, was not performing well, and I, I realized, oh, it's Jetpack. I just need to remove Jetpack and replace its plugins with something else. And I just wrote a little quick post about it. Here's what I did, and here's what I replaced it with. It's consistently the one that everybody goes to, and I'm always on page one for remove jetpack. It's really bizarre. We have to remove jetpack. I write, I know. It's the first thing I do whenever I get a site. I get rid of that thing. Um, yep. And of course, mag magic pixie dust. You just never know when you're going to show up. There's been some weird stuff showing up in there too. So, but yeah, there's there's just a little bit of an element of surprise in there that we don't know for, uh, per the algorithm. All right, so. You want to start out with data, right? Not Lieutenant Commander data, just regular data. Uh, start out with Google Analytics and keyword, keyword research. You've got to figure out what are people asking and how are they finding you and what are they looking for, okay? 
Another thing you can do is if you're kind of a bricks and mortar business or you have employees and customers, talk to them and, and see how they formulate their questions. See what's on their mind. Ask them, you know, how would you ask this question? What, what, what questions do you have about my products? Um, then type questions into Google and answer them with your writing. So um, here's an example of doing that. And I'm, I'm sure all of you have done this at some point, especially if you're blogging and you're trying to find a topic to write about. The way you do that is you start to type what you think the question might be, and then you look at the list of all the different things people are typing. And then you just make, you just make a note of all that stuff, and you just add that into your, into your post. So the more of those you can hit in your post, the more likely you are to show up in searches for those particular topics, because those are things that Google has seen other people type in. So they're being helpful there. So then you see it also shows up in People Also Ask, and it shows up at the bottom here, searches related to how do I get my cat out of a tree. They're at the very bottom of all the search results. So the more you can hit of those, the better you'll do. Um, so of course you want to follow SEO best practices, right? I mean that just goes without saying. It's kind of the order of the day. Title, description, keywords, links, categories, tags, alt, anything else you can stick in there. And we'll talk about schema as another part of that. Um, you want to have enough content to cover the topic. And these days, the more content you have, the better. I mean you could literally write an entire novel about something and somebody would find that useful. <laughs> So yeah, so enough content to cover the topic, any headings, lists, steps, tables that you can put in there, that's all really good. So I'm going to switch over to demo here. Um, oh, oh, sure. Is, um, I know for SEO in general, Google is pushing page speed. And, yes, yep. And it, I'm challenged that with all my plugins. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I know one of the... Uh, one of the requirements that's getting more and more important to them is how fast is your page going? Your page is moving yeah. very fast. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a consistent That's true. Posting. That's when I forgot to put I on there. Yep. Also, the answer is if you can't. Exactly. Uh, yep. It has to be, your page has to be fast. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's just a, a foregone conclusion these days. So, absolutely. All right. So, I'm just going to log into this quick little demo site that I created. And I've got, you know, a number of little blog posts here. Uh, not now. So here is a typical blog post. And I'm going to use this one kind of as an anti-example, and then I'm going to switch over to one that's a good example. Um, this one here, it has 12 steps. So it, it checks some of those boxes, right? So we've got, um, let me just see if I can scroll down here. So it's got step one, step two, step three. But the one thing it doesn't have is at the very top, it doesn't kind of summarize stuff, right? So you want to you want to use some of this space here to just you know quick show you know some of the steps. Um, there's a lot of steps. cut that in half because <laughs> um, if you have too many steps, you won't you probably won't get selected because it's too long to show. Um, but yeah, I mean it's got a, it's got a ton of good information in it, but it's just a little bit too long. So another one that's a good one. So how long should it be? Um, well, to show up in there, um, they typically show between three and five or six steps if, if they show that much, and then it will just say more at the bottom. So if you can't cover at least the, the beginnings of things in the first two or three steps, it's going to probably not land in that, in that Google answer box. So, um, so here's another one that I did. Um, this one actually has fewer steps in it, and the content between the steps is a little bit shorter. So that, this one is a little bit more likely to get, to get in there. Now, I'm not saying that if you do a certain thing a certain way, it's absolutely going to get in there. There's, you're also competing with everybody else. So if everybody else is writing about your topic, there's, you're going to have statistically a lot less chance of showing up. But if you're writing about a niche topic that nobody else writes about, the sky's the limit. You can get in there probably. So. But uh, you'll see here I have headings, and they're actually H1, H2 type tags. Yeah, Hope. Uh, your comments, when they come through, mm -hmm. can you control that? Uh, in WordPress? Yeah. Like, can you delete unfavorable? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, there's a whole comments um, section here that you can turn, you can set all, turn, all, turn on all kinds of settings that will allow you to, to control yeah. all that. So, yeah, I usually have mine off, or I have it set to, you know, I have to approve their first yeah. one. And then they can post after that. I just have to make sure they're not a spammer. So, yep. Robert, the kind of questions right. that would come up, sorry, um, 
I mean, you mentioned beginning, like as a coder, you're like, I always forget. I'm like, oh gosh, I, you know, what is the syntax for anchor tag? I, where do I put the hashtag? You know, what's the syntax for anchor tag? If something comes up, is that mm -hmm. is that kind of thing? Sort of the answer box that you're talking about? Yeah. Where, where it's like maybe W3 school. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just let's throw in a couple of queries and see what we get. So, what's the question that you want to ask on that? Uh, yeah, how do you set up an anchor tag? Yeah, it's one of those things that I do like every six months, and I forget yep. in between. So there's an answer box right there. Right. That's exactly. Yep. So that this is the kind of thing you're also talking about. Yep. So right there, it says how to create an anchor tag, and it tells you what it is and how to set it up. So right there in that first little you know four line paragraph you'll end up with, with enough of an answer that somebody could just go, oh, that's cool. And then they can click in to see, uh, and then you can search for how to create an anchor tag. People also ask and so on. Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly doing that. It's like, yeah. I'm, doing a, I'm doing a bullet list, but oh, I want to change the icon. How do I change that icon again? Yeah, what's, yep. Or what's the tag for a check mark versus a box? Mm-hmm, yep, I'm doing that all the time. So that's, that's how I relate to these answer boxes. Yep, exactly, yeah. What do you prefer for how many words for H2 or H3 headings? How many words in them? Google, you know, yeah, that I would say um, probably between, I'd say no more than 12 or 15 words. You know, it's kind of wordy and long. You want to make them kind of short and brief yeah, if you can. Yeah, I'm trying to make it short. Yeah. Because I see all the Google search <coughs> results, mm -hmm. maybe five or six words yeah. in that box, right? So yep, yep. And like I said, related to a question, you know, these types of questions here. I mean, this stuff right here. Whenever I whenever I sit down to write a blog post, this is the first place I go. I just start typing stuff in this box, and I go, "What are people asking about?" You know, whatever the topic is, and then I just dig through these until I found until I found basically the outline <laughs> for what I'm trying to do. Because the questions people ask reveal what they want to know, and then I can just write based on those questions. It's the easiest thing in the world. Whenever I've got writer's block, I mean. Plus, at some point, I'm going to set aside my business and start writing. I mean, if I could do that, <laughs> you know, that would be awesome. There was something like this that would help me get right past writer's block. You know, you never know. It's like doctor syndrome. Like, yeah, right. Why, uh, <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, and that's that's the thing is, you know, people are always asking health questions and, and stuff like that too. So, um, if you can, if you can find a niche like medical writing, hey, you know, maybe you'll be able to sell millions of dollars in ads. Who knows? All right. So that's. That's basically uh, what I wanted to show you with how to kind of just a basic how to set up a post, um, and you want to make sure that you have like your uh, your excerpt down here. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's right here. <coughs> Write an excerpt so that, that shows up in the search as well, because um, that that's information that Google looks at. Is that what you? But if you're using Yoast and you add the meta description there, yeah. that's what that is. Well, I I usually copy it back and forth yeah, between right. the two. I make a match. If you yeah. Put it in the Yoast thing. You have to put in that as well. Um, you don't have to, but I, I tend to do that just because you know I, I want to give it every chance that I can to, to show up. So when it's, it's it's not showing up in the web page, right? Uh, the excerpt doesn't show up in the web page, but it does show up in your list of blog posts on your own site. So like if you if, if you're so if I were to show the uh, I don't know if I set this up it's right. Different from the category. Right. So the way I have this set up. Right now, I'm showing the entire set of the whole article. But if I had if I had uh, defined that that excerpt, then it would just show that excerpt and then read more. So that's what that's for. Yep. Yep. Wait. So you're saying that if it has the read more line, it'll take from the excerpt and, and not put, show you like the first few paragraph of the right. It'll only show the uh, excerpt. Right. So like if I were to do that, I let's. Think it does that all. Let's see. Yeah, it's a it's a setting that you set up in your. I'm just gonna grab. Come on, Gutenberg. All right, so I'm gonna grab that chunk of text. I'm gonna put that in here. So that's my excerpt. I'm gonna save that. Do you have to put the read more? Uh, nope. It, it's it's what you do is you go into it's under settings reading. And under that you say. For each article in a feed, show the summary. Is, is that the setting? I'm trying to remember. Let's just see what that does. Oh, that's for the feed. Yeah, you're right. Um, I wonder if it's under writing or reading. I don't remember. But I think if we just go visit the site now, that particular article. Yeah, there's another setting 
I'm trying to remember where it is. I haven't used it in a long, long time. But basically, you can just set it so that it will only show the excerpt <clears throat> and then show the read more. So it's somewhere in there. <laughs> I'm one of those people, like, somebody asks me a question and I don't know the exact answer, then my brain starts to go blank. So I'll remember it later tonight and then I'll post about it. But, <laughs> but it's somewhere in here. Um, can't remember exactly where. That's just the general stuff. So anyway, um, Based on the might be on the theme. So under under the customizer, yep. appearance, theme. customize, or theme backend. This is this is 2019 theme. So I don't know. I never use this theme because I always put my other theme on it, and and I don't remember what this even does. Slow. There we go. Am I only, the only one who doesn't like this customizer? Does everybody use this customizer? I don't. I don't use it all that much. No. It doesn't quite work the way I want. Yeah. But sometimes it's the only place that you can do something. Yeah, it doesn't do it there either. Yeah. Well, gosh darn it! I feel silly because I don't know that. That's one of those basic things that you're supposed to know. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Anyway, I'll remember it later and we'll I'll post take about it. it. That's right, take it out of my salary. I'm I'm doing this for free, so yep. pay me. <laughs> all right, so all right, let's move move forward to uh, I think we're gonna go on to schemas next. Present. All right. So schemas. Schema.org is your friend. Write that down. It's a great site. It's got all the information you'll ever need. <clears throat> Some of it's pretty technical. Um, but it's, again, everything you'll ever need. Um, but basically what schema is, is a, it's a vocabulary that search engines can use to kind of understand meaning around concepts and objects that you're talking about on your website. Um, so if you're talking about Sarah's book, an author named Sarah who wrote a book, or if you're talking about book Sarah, meaning she has an events calendar and you can book her time, right? Two different things. I actually had that come up <laughs> with one of my clients. She wrote a book and she's also a speaker. And so we were talking about this button that said book and then it said book Sarah. And we're like, what does this mean? Oh, we've got to change these labels, right? But search engines, they're not smart like humans, you know? So they're going to be like, Sarah, book, book, Sarah, well, what does this mean? Cool. That's the human part. Exactly, right? <laughs> so it's, it's a way to semantically contextualize real world, real world objects and concepts. So you have things like creative work book, movie, music recording, recipe, TV series, audio object, image object, video object, events, medical stuff, organization, person, place, product, review, action. There's dozens and dozens of these things that people have come up with. It's a little bit like XML if, you're ever, if you've ever dealt with that. Yeah? Uh, I did ask before, is that an app as well or just a no. website? Um, so schema, are you talking about schema? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a website. Yep. Just website. Yep. It's just a website. It's not a plug-in or anything. It's just a, it's a website that describes this thing that we call schema. Okay. And it's basically like, if you're familiar with the W3C, it's just a standards body that came up with, you know, here's what schema is going to look like. And, and all the major vendors got together and said, yeah, we'll support that. Browsers, search engines, all that kind of stuff. So it was one of those consortium. Things covered, like, yeah. if I look on my phone or whatever. Right. So if you go, if you go to the site, it's pretty spare looking. It's not terribly exciting or sexy, but um, it just tells you what they're all about. Let me just uh, bring up the uh, magnification a little bit. It tells you what they're all about. And if then, then if you go into schemas, this is where you can look up all the different types of schemas there are. So there's, you know, you can browse the full hierarchy in HTML for a full list of types shown on one page, or you can jump directly to a most commonly used types. Uh, you can look for recent updates and releases. So it's, it's, this is kind of stuff that you know, developers salivate over. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but it's useful. If you know how to use it, it can, it can really benefit you. So here's an example of a recipe, best chocolate cake recipe. right? So right down here, where's my pointer? Right here, you see the rating, the star rating? That's a schema. So there's a, there's a schema for reviews and ratings. And if you uh, insert that schema, it's a basically a, just a little chunk of code that I'll show you in just a bit. 
um, it will kind of signal to the search engine, hey, there's a rating for this, for this recipe. You might want to put that in one of the uh, snippets. These are also called rich snippets or rich data. Yeah? Do you have to get that from an outside source, like not from your IP address? So, so that it looks more legitimate? Yeah. Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. You can have ratings. You can have ratings set up on your site. Like if you're asking people to rate a certain thing or whatever, they they can do that. Um, if if you want authoritative ratings, you'll usually use um, Google Biz, Google My Business. Um, you'll get their ratings. You can use an API to pull that schema into your site, and then Google will see it on your site and relate it back to you know the the ratings that they give. So you, I've got a site where I do that where I take the my customers' ratings and display them right on the website for kind of social proof and then people will, are more likely to buy when they see that, but also helps elevate them in the search results. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty reciprocal. So yeah, so that's, that's the schema, and then that isn't all of it, because um, you can also structure the recipe itself as a schema. <clears throat> so I'll show you that in just a minute too, but you can basically take the pieces of a recipe, like the ingredients list and the, the preparation instructions, you can break all that out into data that a computer can parse through and understand. Um, so there's, there's a number of plugins that will do this for you. Um, one is called seopress.org. It's the free one. <laughs> um, it starts out at free and, and ends up at $39, and that's th the two prices they have is 0 and 39 So that's pretty affordable right there. Uh, Schema Press is pretty darn expensive. Um, I wasn't terribly impressed by it for the price, but um, some people do find it um, useful. And then there's Schema and Structured Data for WP and AMP. Long name for a plugin. Uh, they're, they're right now they're having a half off sale, so it's 49 and 249, but it'll it'll jump up to, you know, 100 and so like that. So is schema.org? Schema.org is where everything is defined, and then these plugins help you make use of those definitions on your website. Right. Yeah. 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 You could. You don't have to have those. And I'm going to show you how to do that without a plugin. I always like to show a plugin, but I always like to show how you can be self sufficient as well. Because if you can do without a plugin and get along just fine, then it's a lot easier uh, on your on your server, especially. So, um, and this presentation will be posted out, so you can click on all of these. And, and I don't want to dig through through them too much because we are limited on time. But uh, so, so what you're talking about when you're talking about schema is different. There's three different types of languages, and I'll show you those in just a second. But <clears throat> one of them is called JSON-LD. And basically what you're doing is you're taking this highly unstructured data. Really, humans are messy. We're just, we don't think logically. We just throw stuff out there, and computers go, right? So that what we're trying to do is we're taking all this messy data, putting it in some, some kind of a structure. Data is messy, disconnected. JSON LD organizes and connects it, creating a better web. So here's some examples of that. <clears throat> so we have HTML markup. Anybody here not familiar with HTML? Everybody knows it. OK, good. So you have a div tag, which is a section of your page. You have a H3, Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets. That's your header. And you have a table of bibliographic details, main author, uh, JK Rowling. And then you end the table, end the div, and then you have the table. Uh, so you have these parts in yellow here are the data, are the metadata that we're trying to insert in there. So we say, well, this is a summary of bi bibliographic details, and this is a summary of the holdings details, right? So we, there's more code later on. But basically, Google can use this information when somebody searches for bibliographic details of Harry Potter, this result could come up, right? Because it knows that all this junk here has something to do with this, right? <clears throat> so, so then we go, uh, so that's all presentation and some data. Then we go to microdata make, markup, which was another kind of um, schema scheme, <laughs> um, where you have all presentation and more data. You have item scope, uh, item type, and it says it's a type of book, right? So it's an object that's like a book. The item property uh, name is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, bibliographic details, item prop author, J.K. Rowling, summary holding details. So there's a little bit more structure, a little more data, a little more detail. So this is another step up from what we were doing over here. JSON-LD markup is all data, and it's hidden in the presentation. right? So we do our presentation layer of stuff. We, we show what we want to show. But then we, we, we write this separate little script here uh, and those plugins will do a lot of that for you graphically, where you can just, you know, point and click and type, and it'll do the, all of this messy stuff here for you. But so what this does is it basically takes all of this data that we're trying to describe, meshed with the presentation layer, separates it from the presentation layer, 
if you're a coding purist, that makes you tingle. <laughs> because you don't want your presentation mixed with your logic or your data. Uh, you want to be able to keep them separate so that you can push them together and pull them apart again. So that's what this is all doing here. It's all just kind of a JavaScript, or like not JavaScript, but just a script uh, called type application LDJSON. So I'm going to show you a real world example of how this works. So the first thing you're going to want to do <coughs> is you're going to add to your header. It's basically a little snippet of PHP where you're saying, I'm creating an object called my schema, and I want to grab the ID, I want to grab the post meta, meaning, meaning the, the custom fields out of, a, out of a post by its ID, right? I'm going to call it my schema, and I don't remember what true is for. I'll have to look that up. Um, so then, if, if that schema is not empty, if there's something in there, then I'm going to spit that out on the page. Super simple. Echo just means print it out onto the, into the document, the HTML document or whatever that's going out to the browser. So it's going to grab all that structured data and stick it right into that and put it right out onto the page. So you just put that in your header.php. So going back to um, here. Um, you are a genius. <laughs> I, I really am not. I spent like seven hours like just trying to learn this stuff myself because I knew it existed and I actually solved this problem for my employer and so I'm like okay I, I think I can do that for this now I think I understand it enough so there's just there's there's lots of layers of things that we we all understand and don't understand so that's why I love this stuff is I can always learn something new every day every day every day so here's one top five song covers by Bob Dylan or no covers of Bob Dylan songs now you'll notice here I have everything in my presentation layer, right here, one, two, three, four, five. And then down here at the bottom, pop this up a little bit so you can all see better. Is that better? So custom fields. There's a name box and there's a value box, right? So now the way you get to the custom fields box, let me just pop up here to the top real quick because there's, there's another step to this. Um, and it's going to be fun for me to find in Gutenberg because I haven't used... Okay, so yeah, this is... Usually there's like a little screen drop down if you're not using Gutenberg, but now it's in this side panel thing here. And these are all the things you can show on the page. Custom fields is the one you want to check there. So that was under... Um, under the, the, the dot um, icon there and then under options. So you have to turn on custom fields to see that. Um, so when you scroll down there, you'll see that I have all the JSON for this <coughs> listed out here. Now I just grabbed this off the internet. Somebody else typed all this stuff in. There's generators out there you can use to like graphically plug stuff into fields and define things. Um, or you can just do it by hand. <laughs> I'm not that much of a sadist, <laughs> or masochist, I guess is the word. So you put all this stuff in here, and then that little bit of code that I put into the header, I'll show you that next, is right here. <clears throat> so there it is. Uh, I don't know if I can blow this up either. There we go. So there you can see. Um, Top five Bob Dylan covers. Same code, I just replaced these values here to spit it out onto the page, right? So now, bye, thanks for coming. <laughs> so now when I view the post, and view page source, let's blow that up too. Scroll down. Where did it go? Don't make a liar out of me. Here it is. So right after my head, right after my head tag, it spills all this stuff out onto the page. Now the user of the page never sees this, right? But every search engine's looking for it, and it'll find it, right? It's looking for this little, this little script tag, application LD JSON. When it sees that, it says, "Oh, run this routine to grab all that data, stick it over here, and follow the schema to where we can put it on a on the uh, site, right? Or on the search engine." Any questions on that? Clear as mud? <laughs> I feel like I'm like the high school science teacher. Okay, you take this and you mix these things. Everybody got that? Okay, great. <laughs> I could be wrong, but why is 
like like the context, mm -hmm. the, there's an, uh, the all at. Like, oh, the at? Yeah, and then the name doesn't have it. I just, I'm not too, not too familiar with PHP. <coughs> right. No, that's a good question. That is a good question. Um, I actually don't know the exact answer to that, but I, I imagine that these are kind of like uh, markers to say um, the context of this, what you're going to see next, is schema.org, and the type of thing from schema.org you're getting is item list and creative work. And then at that point, you don't need this anymore because it's already established kind of a hook into those things. So then from there, you're just describing the data. And then like, here's another one, type, right? So these are all like, almost like keywords that you have to have in there to say, here's what I'm doing next. So like I said, I, I just looked this up the other day to figure it out for myself, but I wanted to pass along the information because why not, you know? <laughs> Um, but there's a lot more you can read and understand on this than I can possibly transmit in, 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 this, in this meeting. But, but yeah, I mean, basically it has a structure of different types and names and, and different pieces and elements that you can add in. So, I mentioned earlier, those all have visual, you know, graphical user interfaces that help you construct all of this stuff so that, you know, you can do that. Um, I used to do a, um, a website, a WordPress site for a film festival in, in Utah. And uh, they're, uh, they're all the movies that were filmed in that small town over the uh, over the you know decades that Western films were filmed there. They wanted to have their own library of it, and I wished I'd have known this stuff then, because then I could have had you know. But we just we just copied everything from IMDb, which was plenty, but <laughs> a lot of work. But we did it. So you can create custom post types, and a custom post type is just like a post or a page or a recipe or any of these types. You can make a, a custom page with fields to put all this information into. And then that gets posted out via schema. So Essentially what you're doing is you're building <coughs> code that sits hidden on your page mm -hmm. that isn't really part of your content per se, right. mm -hmm. but is describing the describing content. Describing it's something that search engines are going to want mm -hmm. and they're going to pull in more. Mm -hmm. it, Think it, of it as... almost like adding a, you know, keywords on the yeah. meta description. In a, it's a little bit like when we used to go to the library, us older folks, you know, we'd go to the library and we'd open up the card catalog and there would be author, subject, Dewey Decimal. I grew up in a library. My mother was the public librarian. I could, I could read at a really early age. I, could, I was shelving books by six, seven, eight years old. I knew the Dewey Decimal System. So, you know, going through those card catalogs, it's almost exactly the same thing. You're just giving a little bit of help to the search engines to say, here's where you find this information in this vast library of everything that's out there. And you can take, you know, this is just a very rudimentary example. I wouldn't normally do it like this where we have everything in the header, because you'll see here I have one for that Dell computer example that you saw earlier, this monitor. You know, so I could have, you know, thousands of these things in my header. That's not efficient, right? So what you would do is you'd blend this into your template code, right? <clears throat> so when you build your theme, you, build, you, you put in your functions.php and your template code and things like that. So this, that's where those things would live. And those other plugins that I mentioned, they do all of that for you. They integrate it so that it doesn't, you know, weigh down your header.php. So 